this gentleman in blue blouse that he has experience and a passion and maybe it can start it off by you and brought up further to Taylor University. Uh, any more questions? One more? Last one? Just want to make a uh, comment. Or uh, provide a comment. Yeah, your uh, comment is almost welcome. Uh, the difference between andragogy and pedagogy. Um, I'd rather think of it as uh, two different approaches and I'd not like to leave or um, divorce the old ways. There are good things about the old ways. I mean, uh, this is how people like that, uh, Hussein and Mr. Renu were, were formed uh, into what they are now. So I think more important is that we, we aim for meaningful learning rather than, uh, you know, uh, going away from the old ways and blindly going into the new ways. And sometimes the new ways may not be suitable if we don't do it right. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, there are two questions. We have extra time. Uh, just respond to Dr. Raja and the others. Um, although there's a dichotomy between pedagogy and andragogy, that is only in the form of labeling. So, if you look at uh, most of the diploma students, yeah, uh, they are from SPM going to diploma. Obviously, we cannot jump straight away from pedagogy to andragogy. But it is a good idea for lecturers yeah, to know uh, what are the principles in pedagogy. Uh, what are the approaches in andragogy, and then uh, you combine, apply wherever is applicable. And my, my su suggestion is this, you have to yeah, link between pedagogy and andragogy, knowing what is taught in the schools, as our friend mentioned just now, and then how do you relate them to uh, adult learning. Yeah? So you don't, you don't differentiate the two. One is pedagogy, one is andragogy, no. You should be a link between pedagogy and andragogy. And come back to psychology just now. Look at the students finishing uh, Form 5, for example. Yeah? They're teenagers or early adults. And then there are also students, which I mentioned just now in UITM. Yeah? In our faculty, we have students who are age 46, 47. I think Dr. Hussain also have this. They are the Guru Besa. The, uh, Principals of primary schools, as uh, senior assistants, headmasters of primary school without degree. But their age are 46, 47, 48. Yeah, they are junior teachers, yeah, they are subordinates, they have uh, masters, some of them have a PhD. The Guru Besar has only a certificate of teaching, CGL Perguran, a certificate of teaching. So what the government did is to have a special program for these headmasters in order for them to get a degree. So we organize a three-year, instead of a four-year degree program, a three-year degree program known as Bachelors in Educational Management. All right? So we have those who are 46, 47, 48 years old. So how do we approach them? Obviously, we are not going to teach them like you're teaching in the schools. Yeah? So therefore, here comes the, the andragogy. So my point is this, yeah? You need to know pedagogy, you need to know andragogy, and then you apply wherever it is applicable. Yeah? But then it is a great katakan, yeah? um, a sorrowful situation where you still apply pedagogy in teaching students yeah, in universities, especially the master's program. Yeah? Okay, thank you. I think Professor Kasim's uh, Abu Bakar's answers is to aware us to, to address the needs of the students of different levels. Huh? Ladies and gentlemen, yes, uh, Professor Hussein would like to respond to the question. I, I would like just to. Uh, indicate that there is always a misconception about the role of universities and the role of training institution and the role of uh, uh, practical uh, uh, practical you know, practic organizations which conduct programs for applied uh, work. So universities they do not produce people who could simply be employed without uh, further exposure to some of the new jobs. It's a wrong, it's a misconception. It is training of the uh, disciplined mind. It is a process of uh, training of the ways of doing things in a manner that should be done, how to, how to, go, how to get things done. Whereas uh, training in institution and, and apprenticeship especially calls for a lot of uh, focus on applied approach. Of, so there is a clear uh, difference between the role of universities and the role of uh, schools. Worse still, role of schools. It's a, Educate, inculcating new values, 
new things for which we are able to live with them later on, uh, or they are able to live with us in a stable society. So this is the, the challenge that we, we are faced with, and there is that, that, that's the reason why, as the gentleman over there said, there's a gap, there's a gap, definitely there is a big gap. There is need for these people to be trained. Even, imagine some uh, uh, teachers over 25 years of teaching, and suddenly be, uh, being appointed as uh, principal. Whereas the 25 years of his teaching period, or her teaching period, was actually focused in classroom teaching, knowledge based. Whereas uh, in, 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 in terms of being a, head, a principal, he has got to manage people, he has got to lead people, he has got to develop people's personalities. So these are, which means that there is a need for training, there's a need for, so it cannot be just uh, automatic. So this is, that's why I said it's a concept, misconception. But be yeah, before we come to the ending part, I think just now a gentleman has highlighted the importance of a teacher's personality, right? As a model. And maybe Mr. Reno could help answer the questions to an uh, audience that is how to deal with diversified students uh, need, right, in terms of teaching and learning activities. Okay, uh, there was a, a question asked about uh, skills for teaching and higher learning, right? Somebody asked that question. Uh, I think these skills, we do not get it uh, overnight. It is actually a long process, like uh, what Dato said just now, we, we have to go through. And although we may start teaching, we may not be very good, but as we learn from by attending seminars organized by IPSR, CEE, Center for Excellence, where we can participate and pick up things. And in this way, there are ways in which you can update your knowledge. For example, we are planning a course on how to do moderation and setting of exam questions. That is a very large skill-based area. And, and IPSR is going to do that. Because when we have new, our young lecturers, you tell them, can you moderate it? They'll be only looking for language errors. At the end of it, there are still language errors. <laughs> because to moderate, you need other skills the balancing of the questions, the levels of uh, uh, Bloom's taxonomy. Are you just operating at level one and two? Then might as well not come to university because we should be taking our students to levels five and six. So these are the problems. So in order to get this, there are short courses available. And if you attend this, you are updating yourself and this will help to narrow the gap from unknown to the known. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Reno. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we are coming to the ending part. I would like to wind up with a short uh, sum up. Today we have touched on teaching and learning is not a science but it's more of an art as well as taking into consideration of students' differences and also the need to bridge between industry needs, society as well as students and high degree institutions. Uh, one gentleman raised the issue, the misfunctions or the malfunctions performed by universities, schools, uh, has ever been met and that should be the concern, I think it's a very good question. Where assessment and evaluation is concerned, we recognise there are two types, assessment of learning and assessment for learning or assessment of product, that means for the grade, or assessment of process, that means governing the needs of students to build them up in terms of competency, in terms of adaptations to the society, including the generation of knowledge. And my ways of using my ways and my approach to produce teachers to me, I find I'm a I'm a teacher, I'm a trainer, I'm a lecturer working in teachers training institute. To me, I find training teachers to me is getting easier and easier from days to day. I would like to share with you and present you a gift. I call the three H approach to produce competent teachers. Basically, in order to tap into a person's resources and drive somebody to do wonders is the passion. The three H basically means hard on, how we get a person motivated, passionate about something, and reflection is very important, but basically it's providing them with a lot of activities to let them realize and show their potential, and that is my teaching and learning activities. Uh, it's full of all types of hands-on activities at the same time throughout my lecture and my, uh, my lecture hours. Okay, secondly is the head on. Head on comes the second. Head on basically means get a person to think, and in order to get a person to think, to be able to think out of the box, knowledge, knowledge is power, 
and we need to build up their knowledge or learning culture in the classroom to engage them with internet, with seeking, sharing expertise, uh, case studies, tasks, and that will get them to solve problems as well as be visionary. It's a vision, as gentlemen shared with us, that lead us to change the world. And simultaneously in my teaching is the H and other H is hands-on. Hands-on means let the students do it, let the students participate, let the students organize. As what Mr. Reno have asked the students, what do you want it to be done? Let them have a choice and get them participated. And with my 3H approach, I find teaching and learning has become very simple to my students, including me, and we enjoy every single minute in the classroom. And before I end this session and pass this mic to Ms. Lim, uh, let us reflect on these short quotations, what types of teachers we are. The quotation goes this way, a mediocre teacher explains, a good teacher demonstrates, Model. And excellent teachers inspire us. Ladies and gentlemen, with such quotation, I end this session. Yes.